We're here with Chairman Dan Burton, Chairman of the House Foreign Relations Subcommittee on and Europe and Eurasia, Europe and, Eurasia. Mm -hmm. and uh, a great servant for the people of Indiana for 30 years, and you're going to be retiring after this year, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you personally for your, your service as a former Hoosier myself. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, appreciate you inviting us in to talk to you in your office. One of the issues that we've been covering at, at Texas GOP Vote that affects a lot of your constituents is the bankruptcy court's handling of the Delphi salary retirees and, and the GM bankruptcy issue, which the president is putting as the shining star on his re-election campaign about uh, saving GM when he really hasn't. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to talk to you about the, the Delphi issue and how does a, a runaway court like this just take away the pensions of people that worked hard right alongside their union counterparts? Uh, you know, first of all, the people that worked at Delphi that weren't union workers, they really got shafted. And uh, I feel a great deal of uh, concern about them and their quality of life because things they depended on their whole lives has been diminished dramatically and some of them just aren't getting anything. And so uh, I think the decisions by the court regarding that, uh, that case was just wrong. And toward that uh, issue, uh, I, I wish we could do something about the tenure of federal judges. I know the Supreme Court, the constitutionally mandated court that's uh, appointed for life, that's one thing, but some of these federal judges have gone off the deep end and made some terrible decisions, and I think that's one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just seems in this particular case uh, with the Delphi issue that they were not represented in this process, and yet without representation, something they worked for their entire lives was just stolen from them, basically, by, by Secretary Geithner and... and well, uh, you know, this administration uh, and the Secretary of the Treasury and, and the Fed, they, they just have done things that I think are just unforgivable. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that they've done is, uh, is uh, uh, showing support for uh, supporters of the president like the union workers mm -hmm. and to the detriment of the people who are uh, white collar workers and I just think that's wrong. The president is a complete politician. I don't think he's a very good president, but he's uh, a politician and that's why he's going to be tough to beat. But uh, if we ever needed a change, it's right now because these decisions that are coming out of the administration and his friends in the court are just wrong. You mentioned earlier the the Supreme Court, and one of the things that concerns me the most is if the president were to be reelected, what would the Supreme Court look like after another four years of Barack Obama? Well, I think after in the next four years, whoever the president is, is going to make at least one or two uh, Supreme Court appointments. If uh, the socialist approach, the European socialist approach, or further to the left than that, is uh, uh, happens in the White House if the president gets reelected. There's no question that we will have uh, an entirely different outlook on what we consider to be our Constitution. They'll be making decisions, I think, that will be really detrimental for the, the country in the future. So I think this election is probably the most important election I've been involved in, and I've been in government and politics for 46 years. Earlier today, we talked to a group of doctors, and I noticed that you were talking to some doctors. I'm married to one. You're married to a doctor. Yeah. Um, the Obamacare, the quote-unquote Affordable Health Care Act, what happens in the next election if, if we do succeed, or in the next Congress, if we do succeed in replacing the president? Well, the if, we, if we keep the House and uh, we don't get the Senate and Obama gets reelected, Obamacare will go into effect. And uh, uh, after a couple of years, it'll be almost irreversible. Once uh, another entitlement comes along, uh, like Medicare or Social Security, people become dependent on it. And that'll be the same thing with Obamacare. And once people start depending on it, it'll be very difficult to reverse it. And that will lead us, I mean, Obamacare is one-sixth of our economy. Mm -hmm. And so we will be well on our way to a completely socialistic government. So it's extremely important that we get the House, the Senate, and the presidency. If we do that, I think we can reverse Obamacare and come up with a realistic approach in dealing with health care problems. Now, through your service on, on the Foreign Relations Committee... Foreign Affairs. Foreign Affairs Committee. Yeah, the sorry. Senate has relations. We have affairs. <laughs> okay. The, um, you have a lot of experience in the Middle East and, and a lot of looking at that. Back in the 80s, uh, some aircraft that I worked on, the F-111s out of Lake uh -huh. England, 
paid a visit to Muammar Gaddafi in, in Libya. Um, Under Reagan when he, yeah. Absolutely. And now we, we see an administration that is really just out of control in the Middle East with, with Egypt, uh, a probably illegal war against Libya that we ran back door through NATO, which is really the United States. What are your thoughts on, on the Middle East at this point? Well, I was a uh, senior Republican on the Middle East the last two years before I became chairman of Europe and Eurasia. And I've been interested in that area for a long, long time. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bad guys in this world that are tyrants. And we need to take a hard look at them and how it affects our foreign policy. But we should never go in and start replacing tyrants until we know where we're going. Muammar Gaddafi, as you mentioned, was bombed by Ronald Reagan after some of the things that happened during uh, Reagan's administration. And Muammar Gaddafi has not been a problem for us ever since. Right. Now, he was a problem for his people, but that was an interior problem. And uh, when Obama went in there with the help and, and, and the uh, uh, accompaniment of the French president, uh, I thought it was a mistake. And what's happened is it's now in chaos over there and Al-Qaeda and the Taliban are in there and they're going to try to use that as a launching place for more, more uh, terrorist activity. Egypt, uh, Mubarak was not a good guy. Uh, you know, some people say, well, he was a bastard. But he was one we could live with because he supported the Camp David Accords. Now, he, we went in and Obama helped replace him. Now, people say he didn't, but he did. He went over there and made a speech and, and stirred up everything and Mubarak was replaced. Now we have the Muslim Brotherhood, a radical Muslim group that's in charge of the government, and uh, they are talking about, their new president, talking about modeling their government after uh, Iran. Well, that's what we need, is another one of those in the Middle East. Garbage is up to uh, rooftop high now. They can't provide services in either Libya or Egypt, and it's a, it's a tinderbox over there because of that. The Gaza, which is right next to Egypt, Hamas has been elected uh, to run that area, and they are uh, a terrorist organization trying to destroy Israel, as is Hezbollah. So this administration, I know a lot of people aren't paying attention to it, and they may not agree with what I'm saying, but I'm telling you, this administration has really hurt the United States uh, and our future foreign policy. It's a disaster, and I think there's very likely we're going to see a major conflict over there because of this administration. Is it possible that they're that incompetent, or do you think this is by design? I think the president, first of all, has no experience. Two years as a state senator, two years as a United States senator, and now he's the president of the most powerful country on earth, or what we thought was the most powerful country on earth. Still is, but if he has his way, I'm not sure we're going to keep that position. And uh, I think it's probably a combination of both incompetence, and also I think he has a very liberal attitude. I think he's always looked at America as a, a, a state that tries to control the rest of the world, and he's never liked that. He sent Winston Churchill's statue back to England mm -hmm. uh, because they had the worldwide uh, organization. And so I think he deliberately wants to diffuse the popularity and strength of the United States. And I think that's by design, and I think it's also incompetence. And a lot of people would be very upset to hear me say that, but I really mean it. I think he's a disaster for this country. And then if you want to talk about the economy, my goodness. <laughs> well, the economy is certainly a major issue, and I know in, in Indiana, which is one of the battleground states, as the, the middle, Midwest is through there, jobs are very important. What, what is the current economic climate in your district? Well, in, in Indiana, because of Governor Mitch Daniels, mm -hmm. uh, Indiana is doing better than many states. But, uh, you know, because of uh, the, the closing down of uh, Delphi and General Motors and and uh, some of the other things where they've reduced staff and, uh, you know, the economy's been hurt. But I don't think we've been hurt as badly as some of the others. I know in Kokomo recently there was a, a rally for the Delphi workers and, and there was a lot of comments back and forth. And I was reading in the Kokomo Tribune about some comments from, from the union workers and how hateful they were towards people who were working right alongside them their whole lives. It, it just really seems surprising. Well, you know, Obama is beholden to the union, unions and the trial lawyers and other special interest groups, and he's not going to lose that. That's part of his political base. And so he and his administration have catered to them and done his best to make sure that they prevail on every issue. And they did in the Delphi case, and that's just wrong. 
those uh, those uh, salaried workers who worked there their whole lives have been screwed, mm -hmm. and they're they're not uh, living the kind of life that they anticipated in retirement. Some are really in bad shape, right. and I just think it's a travesty. I, I completely agree with you. What can the Congress do to um, protect the rights of people like this? I mean, it's not just in this GM case. We've got cases now where. We're in the bankruptcy courts. They're, these lawyers are coming and suing individual shareholders who did nothing other than buy shares of stock, and and they're holding them personally liable for the actions of the. Of well, the what can be done? Elect a Republican president and Republican Congress. Mm -hmm. Obamacare, all these other crazy things that are happening, that are affecting our economy now and and for in the future. Uh, it's not going to get better. It's going to get much much worse if we don't get control of Congress and get. Uh, and get a, a Republican president. Now, even with us getting Congress and a Republican president, it's not going to be any cakewalk. We've got a $16 trillion national debt. We're running over a trillion dollars a year in deficits. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at uh, the deficits in Social Security, Medicare, and everything, we're up at 70 some trillion dollars in the red. And this country is on the brink of another, uh, of something as bad or worse than Greece. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not going to be easy for Romney or a Republican Congress, but it'll be a heck of a lot better than if we continue down the path we're on. Well, personally, I'm sorry to see you, see you leaving. We need good, solid conservatives in the House, but uh, hopefully some, someone will come along behind you and, and pick up the, the battle. Well, I'm hopeful. I think Susan Brooks, who's going to probably take my place, I think she'll do a good job. But there won't be anybody coming along more conservative than I am. Mm -hmm. The Constitution is so vital to the future of America. And this man is going to try to dis, 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 disassemble it. He's going to do it piece by piece if he gets his way. And he's circumventing Congress right now with appointments, with regulations, and it's just, it's just terrible. And so I really fear for the future of America if we don't change this administration and, and elect somebody that cares about where, where we're going. Well, Texas is a solid Republican state, and we, Thank we, God. we try to send our conservative message all over. You know, my son's down there. He's He works in uh, in between uh, uh, Dallas and Fort Worth. Oh, where, where is he? He works for a, a pipe company. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't tell you the name of it, but he's real happy. He likes Texas. Is he in Joe Barton's district? Or? He may be. Uh, uh, the only thing he doesn't like is it gets a little hot there in the summer. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we make it very hot for the Democrats in November. I think we will. Yeah. Well, Chairman, thank you very much for your service to our country and for giving us the time here at Texas GOP. Is Bar. this going to be shown any place besides Texas? Oh, it'll be shown all over the country. Well, all I can say is anybody that's watching this, I've been here for 30 years. I'm a conservative, and I hope you're paying attention. This is the most important election in your lifetime, and it's not only going to affect you, it's going to affect your kids and your grandkids in the future of this country. So if you're paying attention to anybody, I hope you'll listen to me. I'm not going to be here next year, so I have no axe to grind. But I'm telling you, if you give a damn about this country, don't re-elect this president. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.